Uh, going back to fintech, and then we can circle back to to the role of CEO and entrepreneurship. With COVID nineteen and, and the crisis that's going on, what role do you think uh, fintech is going to play on that, or how is fintech going to change over the next few years because of that? Yeah, so we we recently wrote an article about this, how how, how fintech is helping already. Uh, mm-hmm. I think in, in some elements, fintech has played a big role in the, the, the disbursements of funds between the government and small businesses. Uh, so that's that's one way that fintech has helped. Uh, I think one of the ways that fintech can continue to help is in terms of you know uh, the evolution of contactless payments. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's going to be a common trend to follow. Uh, thinking in a recession, also people are going to want to uh, reduce how much debt they have. Uh, we actually just launched a product actually today called the Debt Payoff. It's Good. been around for since December, and it now processes around, I don't know, something like close to $400 million a year. Oh, wow. And that, that's basically people wanting to uh, pay off high interest credit cards with a low interest loan. Right. So we work with several um, lend tech companies in um, the U.S. and Mexico to, to make that happen. Uh, so I think that that's going to be a common way where where fintechs can help. Uh, another way that can help is just anything that's kind of any kind of branchless banking mm-hmm. where people can do more of the banking from home, believe it or not. Uh, there's a lot of people, even in the U.S., that still do a lot of For sure. branch-centric banking, right? Yeah. Uh, they think they have to go to a bank to you know check their balance or but they think they have to go to the bank to, to, to withdraw cash or even pay bills. Uh, I think this acts as a forcing function to that, that, that lagging part of, of, of the adoption curve mm-hmm. to finally adopt uh, digital services. So uh, I think that's another way that uh, FinTech is helping as well. I love that. Uh, one thing that, uh, well, I was, um, when I heard you on, on a different podcast, I heard you talk about was the second stage of being a CEO. Yeah. And that's something that, as one myself, with a small team of just five people, I was really interested to hear your thoughts and point of view on that, and, mm-hmm. and what it really means to you. Yeah, yeah. So this is from uh, from the great folks at Y Combinator. I think you have a good quote. They say, in the first stage, you go from you go you're working in the company, and second stage, you're working on the company. And I think what they mean by that is really. You, you go from kind of chief doer uh, to kind of, or to doer in chief to kind right. of manager in chief. You start really building that middle layer of managers that can help amplify uh, your, your vision and your strategy and execute it. Uh, I think that's something that I think most companies struggle with. We, we ourselves went from about like 30 people late 2018 to we're 60 now. So we doubled in size and we're probably going to have to double in size again uh, uh, after this round that we're closing now mm-hmm. uh, from 60 to 120 next year. And that, that's a big, that's actually a bigger challenge than anticipated because, uh, you know, the, the smarter people you hire, the more demanding that they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have to strike a balance between being um, autonomous and, um, and, and, and being there to guide them along. Right. So I think that that's, just, that's a tricky balance to, to, to straddle that I myself am still learning. I think a lot of CEOs are still learning when they, mm-hmm. they go between in that, that phase already. So uh, yeah, that second stage of being CEO, it's, it's, it's uh, scary, but it's, it's a good scary, right? Because right. uh, your company is growing, you're bringing in great people, uh, you bring in people that are smarter than you, which also, right. again, if you're not mentally prepared for that, you can shock you. So, um, and if they're smarter than you, they're gonna they're gonna challenge you, right? And again, you want that to happen. If they're not challenging you, then, then you're in the wrong room, right? It's like if you're the smartest person in the room, get the hell out of there because you don't need, yeah. need to go somewhere else. That's been my cue in life. Like I was not the smartest guy at JP Morgan. I was not the smartest guy at work. Makes sense. I'm definitely not the smartest guy at JP Morgan Combinator. So I know it's the right place. So you want people that are gonna challenge you just the right amount, and I think that's just part of the evolution of being a CEO. Yeah. 